Hi there! In this chapter of Reading 101, I'd like to demonstrate how I like to use hot hide glue for reed organ repairs, restoration, and rebuilding. As with any mechanical musical instrument that is over 100 years old, many parts can wear out, get damaged, or break. In most cases, I feel that hot hide glue is a perfect match for mostly all reed organ repairs. So what is hot hide glue? It's good stuff, and it's exactly what its name is. I have always had a name on it called Mr. Ed's Hooves. However, it is really not made from horse hooves. Hello, I'm Mr. Ed. Or it would be called horse hoof glue. There is also fish glue, and that works too. High glue is made from the hides of animals, a process where the skins are generally cooked in water, and the residue from that is dried into these crystallized flakes or grains. So what do you need to get started if you do not have an automatic glue pot? I bought this solution here for under $12. All I need is a brush, a thermometer, this pot, and a jar, and of course the glue crystals. An automatic glue pot will probably be on my future Christmas list one of these years, but in the meantime I have no problems using this inexpensive solution and it works quite well for me over these past few years that I have been doing this hobby of reed organ restoration. I always like to mix small batches at a time using a two to one mix, using a quarter cup of glue crystals to a half cup of water. Then I stir the concoction together and I put it in the refrigerator overnight. I don't always put all the water in as I like to have it on the thicker side before I use it. Then I add a little water until it is the way I like it. When it is ready to be heated, place water and the thermometer in the heating pot and heat on the lowest setting. The water might briefly come to a boil until the thermostat in the pot catches up, but the glue will still be okay as it takes more time than that to reach temperature. But keep an eye on it anyway. The glue temperature that I always aim for is between 140 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. If you overheat the hide glue, you will ruin your batch and you will have poor results in using hot hide glue. The first and foremost reason I like to use hot hide glue is because it can be undone easily in the future without any damage or wear to the glue parts or if any problems arise. Guaranteed, this will happen. Before you glue, you will need to prime or size the surface first. To do this, mix a very watery batch of glue. All I do is steal some water from my pot and put it in a little dish here. And then I take some glue and I mix it with the water. Now I can moisten the wood where I will be gluing. This opens the pores of the wood and lets a small amount of the glue you have in the mix penetrate the wood for a really good bond. If the surface was previously glued with high glue, you don't have to do this priming or sizing step, but it definitely does not hurt if you want to do it anyway. Once the moistened wood has dried for a few minutes, you are ready for bonding. Here I have a scrap of bellows cloth. I'm going to give you an example on how easy hot high glue is to use. You just apply. This board here is from an old exhauster. It's set. Now I like to use a roller to put this on. Smooth it out. Now look at this. It's already set and it's in place. It's not coming off. It's not like white glue. Or, if I wanted to, I can still peel it back up. Add a little more. And put it back down again. It's very easy to use. Another option, if you don't have a roller, 
Just use a dowel. Here I like to use a thicker mix of glue when I'm gluing felt or leather. But to do pallet valves with high glue, it's very quick and efficient. Let's put a little bit of glue on the brush, create a small line. Line it up. Press, and presto, it's glued in place. So now the felt is in place. I want to continue on. Do the same thing again, either use this one stripe. Some builders, they just use dots. Tiny dots of glue. Press and hold. It's glued in place. It's not like contact cement or white glue at all. Again, we just line it up. Trim it off. And here we have a new pallet valve ready for another 100 years of service. Here is the best thing when the builder or previous restore person used hide glue. In order for this instrument to continue to be a serious musical instrument for generations to come, it will need to be serviced again in the future. Here I have three pallet valves with different glues on them, and this one here having a different material altogether. All of these pallet coverings will work, but what will happen when my great-great-grandchildren need to restore it again? The white glue? Very carefully scrape file or sand. Either way, the results are destructive to the wood, and you need to be very careful and patient to remove the glue and felt to make sure the surface is perfectly smooth again. It becomes even more difficult if the pallets have Pitman buttons on them. The same results will be with the neoprene and plastic glue. It will get your reed organ playing fine, but when that time comes in the next 10 to 20 years to replace it because the neoprene got hard or brittle, it will make it so much more difficult to repair. Hide glue does not bond well to plastic glue or white glue, so it would have to be completely removed first. Here is the high glue palette. When I removed the felt, it bonded just as good as the white glue. But with a little warm water applied, the pallet valve is quickly returned back to new condition in a moment without any destruction. Done. Remember to keep water in your glue pot and be observant of the temperature, as the water will evaporate over time and you will need to top it up. When I am working with the glue, I use tin foil over the glue jar to help hold the moisture in the glue and add water to the glue when required. If the glue is not covered, it will form a skin on top, which can be stirred back into the glue, but you will have to wait for it to melt or else you will have lumpy glue. If you are not going to be using it again for the day, it is best to always store it in the refrigerator and label it so that nobody is tempted to eat it with their toast. It can stay good for a month or more when refrigerated, but when you see it growing fuzzy white or green stuff, it means it's time to make a new batch. The dry crystals have an unlimited shelf life when kept dry. There are many aspects to restoring reed organs that I'm not covering in this chapter, as this is only to demonstrate the use of hide glue and why I like to use it. If you own a barely working reed organ, or you own one that looks like this, and you have a basic mechanical knack to figure out how things work, you may have a new and rewarding hobby waiting for you. 
I hope this little video takes away any apprehension you might have about using hide glue if you have been considering to use it for your first restoration. In the next chapter of Reading 101, I'd like to discuss more about playing techniques, using expression, and different stops. Until then, be creative, make music, and have fun. Thanks for watching.